Oh, it's Gary Fox here, and uh, the clock is fairly well completed. It's not done yet, and uh, there's more work to be done. But thought this was a good point to uh, kind of show you how I would continue doing it and how I did what I did. Uh, can't show you the individual key clicks uh, because there is no real way of uh, compressing that amount of time. Uh, it's not been an easy job. <laughs> Anyhow, if you remember right, last time what I did was I created a whole bunch of these little hammer things that I call it. That's what my term is. It's these green boxes. And then uh, what those did was allow me to figure out the amount of space that I could dictate, dedicate for each letter, each number. So then the very first step I did was I designed the letter I because it was the simplest. Let's take on the simple job first. And uh, I designed it with these little tabs here on the side. And I could do a little more dressing up on it. Now, there's a lot of stuff that could be done. These were the crude, very first crude letters. If you remember right, I had the height of these letters at 30, um, 30 millimeters or 3 centimeters. Uh, once I designed the very first letter, I kind of decided that, that was probably too big. So I moved my little box here up to 25 millimeters from the top. And uh, I think I made a better looking number. So once I designed one, it was easy to copy that and create the three. And I put a little bit of space in there. We'll zoom in and show you. I uh, put a little space between each of those numbers. Also, because I don't know how the uh, CAM software will translate this, I drew each and every line myself, which is not that big a problem because you can duplicate the lines. I decide not to use the uh, hatch functions, which also have their own set of problems. And uh, I may be overdoing it. Uh, I'm taking a conservative route on that. I always do. Uh, because if you don't know and you depend upon something that's going to, uh, it could it could get you uh, in the future. So I took the conservative route of going ahead and drawing it rather than depending upon the CAM software to do something automatically. Uh, there's two upcoming um, tutorials that are going to be talking about hatching. And there's a lot of gotchas in hatching. And my guess is that those same gotchas are, is also in the, uh, the CAM software. If it does even try to handle hatching. Uh, every CAD software I've ever seen has some problems with hatching. And uh, uh, it's an automatic function that makes some assumptions. And sometimes those assumptions are not the same as what us humans make. So, uh, I went ahead and did all these by hand. Anyhow, you can see I put a little space between each of the two letters there. And uh, that's how I created that. I did number three second because it was centered right around uh, the same place as number one was. It was centered right on the line. I then moved over and did the, uh, number two. And that moved it over just a little bit uh, to make it so that the space was centered. And that was relatively easy because uh, it's easy to, to do things where you have fixed numbers to work by. Now the V was another, another thing. So first I had to create a V. I looked at a lot of uh, Roman numerals and most of them have one side of the V wide, the other side uh, thin, and that's the way I tried to design it. I think I did a semi-successful, but I don't think it was 100% successful, and I'm kind of hard on myself that way. 
A uh, couple things I don't like about my V. If you look at it down here, let's say it's the number six or it's number seven, the V looks as if it's twisted compared to the number two, and it's not really. It's just like it is up here in the upper version. But the reason I think that's happening is kind of an optical illusion. I use the same angle between uh, both sides of the V. I think it actually needs to be modified on the uh, one side, and I'm not real sure which side to make the uh, V look like it's uh, not twisted and compared to the others, the other letters. Uh, that would take some modification. And that's the deal about CAD. Okay, we've done it. We've saved everything. All our work is saved right here. Uh, this is the only part that's going to actually be used, the clock itself. So with the work saved off to the side, I can create a clock. As soon as I finish the X's on this, I could create the clock and I would have one. But then if I wanted to improve it in the future, I would have all these other letters over here. And what I would recommend is once you get the clock done, you delete all the uh, bogus green. You change all of the red and blue on that clock itself to a black, so it's all one color. It's all one layer. But I, before I did that, I would make a copy of the uh, file and then have the other file that had everything just the way it's shown right here so that I could go ahead and modify it in the future. But I have one file that I use for the production. As you see up here, the naming that I used for this thing, I call it Clock Part 1, Another Copy. There was actually, I took made two copies of, uh, of that clock at the end of Part 1 video. And the purpose of that was that uh, I could not only screw up once, I could screw up twice before I really messed myself up. <laughs> I like having a Plan A, a Plan B, and a Plan C. <laughs> okay, after I did the... Uh, the V, then I started, I made the actual V, the very first one I drew was the V-I-I-I, -I -I. that's going to be the fattest character, and the uh, the fattest symbol that's going to be, or widest I guess I should say, on the whole clock, so I did that, I figured if I fought it, so that's probably the hardest one of the whole clock, if I fought it, and got it done, then I uh, I could go ahead and move on to the VII, the VI, the V, and then the IV. And you see I haven't put the IV, which is the number four, on the clock yet. So I'll show you how that's done. Uh, we'll do one thing here. So we're going to do a copy. I'm going to uh, do a window. And as we do that, we got all those copied, ready to be copied. I do a uh, from end, grab this thing, and I'm going to put it, I can use end right there because I have all those other ones. So I go ahead and put it right there at the 12 o'clock position. Notice 12 will be your last one you have to do, and I'm going to keep the original in this case. Now I'm going to ready to rotate, and luckily it's all already highlighted, so there is a purpose of why uh, the CAD designers did that. I rotate it, and uh, we've already selected the stuff. Select my reference point. It's going to be right there where it was where we moved it over. So now you see why I did the hammer. Okay, the directions. Uh, whenever you rotate something in CAD, if it's a positive number, it rotates counterclockwise. If it's a negative number, it rotates clockwise. So I'm going to have to go 140 degrees in the minus direction. Sorry, 120. 120 degrees in the minus direction. I do OK, and I'm going to delete the original this time. And uh, I now have my number 4 put on there. So that's the way I did them. Again, if we turn off bogus green, we get an idea of what it's going to look like. I would change bogus blue and bogus red. Well, we can do that right now. We'll uh, change both of those from blue to black. Whoa. 
Whoops, I turned that one off. And we'll see what our clock's starting to look like. I uh, now have to do the characters that have X. I'd have IX right here. X, XI, and XII. Uh, I am not going to go to the trouble of creating those. Uh, you see basically how I do it. There's a lot of other little improvements we could do uh, besides the fact that I think I need to clean up the V. Let me show you what those would be. Uh, and what I'm going to do is create a bogus line because I want to keep this the way it is. So I'm going to create a couple bogus lines right here. Um, I'll just, let's make them a little more reasonable. About 10. And we want to go to free positioning. And we'll create another one. Vertical line. Okay, I'll trim those. So that they're both butted up against each other. Okay, there is a function here called uh, there's bevel and round. Round is the one you want. And what you do is you select the first entity, you sec select the second entity, and it makes a rounded thing. Uh, I believe there was a... Uh, okay. We could then extend the lines in the other part so that it would make that corner um, actually a corner. And I think there's another function, and unfortunately I forgot it right now. So that we could have the square corner as well as the round. And you could fill in all these little spaces where these characters meet that little, uh, that end point. That would make it look a little nicer. Uh, there's a lot of work you could do. Uh, this is just the initial idea. But you can see how I did it. Is that the smartest way of doing it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, with the spacing on those lines as we zoom in. Now that I've got rid of my red and blue, it's a little harder to see. So spacing on these lines uh, right, and each of those is spaced at 0.25 millimeters. Uh, I don't know. That would depend upon how the uh, engraver works, both the cam software and how wide the uh, tool is on the engraver, and does it give you the results you want. You may actually have to go smaller. You might want to go bigger. That I don't know. So anyhow, uh, as you can tell, there's a whole lot of I don't knows. And uh, that's the way life is sometimes. I think I'm going to uh, actually produce a new uh, post on that. Uh, because sometimes you don't know. So you take your best shot. You try to play it conservative so it has the highest chance of working. But you still have a bunch of I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> and that's the way life is. Um, anyhow, I think this is pretty much it. Appreciate you listening.